Welcome to another Q&A. If you're new here, hello, my name is Amy and let's just get right into it. You guys asked on my Instagram stories, which is where I posted for your questions, but I also added a few that came in on my channel comments. By Lily Bay, if classic flaps were to be back at normal prices, what color would you get next? That is a good question. Um, I think if classic flaps were back at normal prices as in prior to all the really crazy increases that we've experienced the last two years, I guess ever since 2020, then um, I would have definitely added more than just the only one that I have. So uh, my current only classic flap if you don't count the minis. I guess if it was back to normal pricing or at least maybe back to the price it was in 2020 perhaps, um, you know, it was still much better than now. I would say I would have gotten a black one for sure. Having said that, I am aware that the classic flap is not sort of that everyday bag that is very easy to get in and it doesn't fit a lot. Even if you have it in a medium size, it only fits a little bit more. Of course, it will be bulkier as well, depending on how you prefer um, the bag to fall on you. I would say the medium is not going to be like so big either, but it is going to be a bit bigger than the small. So depending on how you want it to look on your body frame. So um, yeah, if I were to just get at least one more, I would say black because I already have a light color and I definitely can benefit from having a black one. I wouldn't go for for red or pink because I can get away with this gray with any pink outfits, white outfits, um, any sort of like lighter color pastel outfits. It goes well with even today's top. Um, so I think having a darker color like a black would be amazing. In fact, I want to ask you guys back, what colors classic flap do you have to have in your collection if you own more than one? Or even if you own one only, uh, what color does it have to be? I think the default is usually black, but it can be different for everyone, right? So let me know in the comments. Next question by Mini Footprints. How do you balance your YouTube channel with your full-time job? Ugh, I don't. <laughs> I started YouTube as a hobby. It was plain and simple, just something that I thought I would try out and I wasn't even certain I would love it. I started off with just vlogging here and there and I did end up posting my first collection video, which um, might have been the video that kind of put me on the map. I think um, that was one of the highest views video in my first year. Even if not all my videos are about luxury fashion, sometimes I have favorites videos, sometimes I have um, fashion hauls that are kind of more high street brands. Um, it was still sort of all related and all meshed together. It started off being something fun, something not so serious, and of course it became more serious. And now we have the luxury live show and I post very regularly. Uh, as regularly as I can. And so I don't have a very good balance. If you think that I have, I actually don't because I am constantly in my head, I'm constantly thinking about content, what to post next, when to film. Um, I'm constantly editing. So whenever I have free time, which is all the free time I have, I'm always sitting in front of my computer. And even though I did say in the past, at one point I said in the past that I edit quite fast, it's actually not true anymore because I know a lot of you have very short attention span. Most people, they just want to fast forward. They just want to see what you got. They don't even bother with your storytelling. So um, there's a lot of people like that. So I try to cut a lot of fluff without reducing the meat of the content because there needs to be context still, right? So. I do a lot of editing actually now, even if it's just cutting out the ums and the ahs that are too often, I don't cut out all of them. But all in all, basically, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not really managing it that well in a sense. Um, I don't have any free time anymore. I am constantly doing something in my free time. I'm constantly 
working on a video, whether it's thinking about the concept, and especially if I unscript a video, then the editing process is very lengthy because it's so unorganized, my thoughts are everywhere. So um, yeah, don't let, don't let what you see fool you because um, it's very, very time consuming, very, very time consuming. But I don't mind it in a sense that I do enjoy the process. I don't mind editing. I don't mind doing these things. Um, so yeah, it's not that balance. <laughs> Thoughts on Fendace. So we did a luxury live show episode that was members only. Literally just launched that week, so it was really fresh and I hadn't seen anything. I hadn't even researched it. I didn't even know it was coming out that weekend, but it did. So it was very, very sort of first impression. Now that I have a really good impression of the collection, I will say one thing though, that during that live shopping session, that live luxury live show live streaming, and it was a live shopping session, that there was a lot of FOMO involved and I saw a lot of things that I was like wow it's so cool and just because it was my very first impression and just literally seeing every single item live and for the first time I didn't know what my expectations were so the first impression was quite good I will say that uh, Versace by Fendi was definitely more of my taste it was less loud and it was still tasteful in a sense that I can see myself get those things. What really stopped me from getting anything is that I'm aware that it was very FOMO and that it's not my usual aesthetic. Not against Versace or Fendi myself, but I just know deep down that whenever I end up kind of veering off of Chanel, Hermes, or even LV, that I, you know, I like the item. I will still like the stuff that I get, but I may just have that honeymoon phase and really enjoy the item initially, but not as much later on. I was just trying to suppress that FOMO feeling in the end. I did kind of FOMO over a few things and um, it lasted several days and I'm glad that I didn't go for it. But I will say some of the things that I quite liked were uh, the main t-shirt because I like that the embroidery, the main embroidery anyway, is well, is embroidery. It's not just all printed logo. I think the frame is a printed logo. A few of their accessories, I think they were fun and not so over the top that it wouldn't work with my existing wardrobe necessarily. I can still probably incorporate it, such as their silk scarves, the silk uh, bucket hat that was reversible. The bucket hat, I liked it, but I just, I mean, I already have two, so I don't really need another one technically. I did enjoy, I did appreciate it though. Um, in terms of the bags, I appreciate them. I, I like that there is the Fendi aspect and the Versace aspect. I can definitely appreciate that, but I think if I were to go with one only, it would be that very small nano baguette in the gold sequence. I think that one is just the extra special one that is worth getting if I were to get a collectible item. And I also like that that version came with the strap U, that very obnoxious chain that makes the bag in a sense. So um, you would otherwise have to buy it separately. So I do like that bag for that reason. Aside from that, I will say um, a couple of their shirts were nice. Those would be my top picks if I had to like really be serious about buying any of the pieces. And I am just stopping myself because I knew it was a collab, it was like a limited edition, and it's not my usual style. So I can have it, but I can also not have it. Hi Amy, does frame ultra high barrel jeans work well on petite women yes it does which is why i have two pairs i just washed my black pair uh these are not even black like they're just dark charcoal and it's a sort of like that thinner denim i also have the real blue denim it's a much thicker denim but there's the same cut and i uh definitely I'm so glad that I bought these. They're called barrel jeans because see how wide they are basically and it tapers on the bottom and they're cropped and it also has these pleats in the front. So the, the blue pair also is like that. And I just washed this in the washing machine, also dried it in the drying machine it, it comes, and it comes out perfectly well. I didn't iron it or anything, didn't have to steam it. So it's just 
so good quality and I've been recommending them since the first day I bought them so I will link to the to these ones down below I highly recommend them for petite women especially because I'm only 5'4 and 5'4 is not short but it's not tall either it's very average and a lot of times when I buy regular size jeans they are too long I can get away with not hemming them sometimes, but just depends on the cut. If it's a boot cut, I definitely have to hem them. If it's a skinny jean or legging, I can get away with not hemming them, but there's always that little bit of like scrunched up look. It's, I mean, it kind of bothers me, but not enough to like hem them. So these are just the perfect length. They are just kind of, they kind of hit me at ankle length. And I love that because not only does the barrel part give me shape that I don't normally have because I'm not the most wide at my hips. I have quite narrow hips. So I like that it gives me that shape, but also they're high-waisted so it makes your legs look longer even though they are cropped. They're just cropped on a very tall woman. So if you're like five, six or higher, then yeah, they're gonna look more cropped on you. But on me, they just look like ankle length and they're just very flattering. You can wear any types of shoes with it. And also they're so comfortable because they're barrel and there's so much fabric around the leg area, but in a good way that you can tuck in any shirt. I got mine in size, this is a size 24. It actually is quite roomy. This, this charcoal one is a bit oversized at the waist. So I could have taken a 23, but I don't mind it because I can wear a belt. The denim version, like the real, blue denim version. Take it in your actual size. It's just that this one is a bit a tad oversized and I wonder if it's because the fabric is thinner. That's the only reason I can think of. But otherwise, love these so much. So much. I wish they came in more color like khaki, um, beige, um, green, all kinds of colors. I would have I would have gotten all of them. The next two questions are by Lizzie C. Do you ski? Also, what do you think of the Alexander McQueen small skull handbag, the mock croc one? I don't ski, but I have skied, <laughs> meaning that I don't uh, do these very strenuous winter sports involving my legs. You guys know my arthritis issue. If you don't know, well, you know now. I have um, a lot of arthritis and um, it's probably not in my best interest to do these very intense balancing sports even though I know how. I have skied in the past and I know how to skate also but I don't do it anymore obviously because of my condition. For the Alexander McQueen bag, I took a look at it. It reminds me of a walk. Personally, it's not my style but I think that if you're just after a walk style or size bag and you don't really care about branding in fact you like that it's mock croc in fact you like that there's that skull and you like the chain i think go for it because price wise it's very reasonable for a luxury brand and also you still get to use use the bag as the same function as a walk in a sense that you can fit your phone your keys probably and um, a little bit of makeup i say go for it if you like it but um, just personally it's not my vibe i also don't buy anything with skulls on my mom's always deterred me from buying anything with skulls she's very superstitious she doesn't want any um of that vibe i don't know what it is that she doesn't like that um and so she always discouraged me that's why i don't really gravitate towards them anymore i kind of just got used to avoiding them the next question by kate miller do you plan on picking up any Cartier pieces the only piece at Cartier that i have my eye on uh, hasn't gone up yet so it is the juste inclus slim that would be the only thing that i'm eyeing that could add to my existing stack um, but the only reason why I haven't added it is that I'm okay with just this one bracelet too I think it just it looks fine on me I don't feel like I'm missing out um, I'm sure it looks amazing if I add another piece and I'm sure it will stack really well and I'm not in a hurry I don't want to let price increase give me FOMO about having to buy it when I'm not in a hurry to buy it. I'm sure one day when I'm really bored, 
I have nothing else to buy and I feel like buying something, I might just walk into my quartier store and buy it. But at the moment, I don't have that urge. And also I heard that the price increase is not gonna be that bad anyway. It's gonna be a very nominal price increase. I heard that it's gonna go up by like two or 3%. Don't quote me on it, but like, let's say it did go up by 3%, right? It's not the end of the world. Uh, so, um, even if I were to get it later, that's okay. So that would be the only piece that I'm eyeing that I'm like, oh, I wouldn't mind having it. But at the same time, I'm not in a hurry. Now I'm curious, how many of you got scared, right? Got FOMO from the rumored price increase. And did you end up getting anything? I'm sure a lot of you did, but just, I'm trying to let FOMO in affect me less. Unless I already wanted that item for a long time, then of course I'll buy it, whether it's going to be price increased or not, but obviously before price increase is always great, right? Hi, Amy. Do you still wear your Gabrielle in 2022? I'm thinking to get it in black. I don't really see it anymore. Yes, I do. I do wear my Gabrielle bag still. Um, I don't wear it as often as I first got it because, you know, when you're in a honeymoon phase with your bags, you always want to wear it more and you always sort of you know, kind of favor it more at the time. I'm really glad that I have this bag because I really like it. And it's a bag that I do reach for, but just not as much as the initial honey phase. Um, the initial year that I got it, I just couldn't get enough of it. But you guys are also aware that my collection is, is not so, it's not so small that I have to rotate this one all the time. And so, I love it. I'm glad that I have it in my collection. It will never go anywhere. Um, black is perfect. I think if you still are thinking about it and you just can't stop thinking about it and you really love it, I think getting the black is perfect. Um, it's the most hard wearing color that you can ever get. And if you were just to get even one and you have a honeymoon phase at first and you wear it less later, I think that's okay too because it is still part of your collection. It is one of those bags that I don't see not having in my collection because it's so unique. It's so different from all the other classic flaps, all the other flap bags, all the other sort of top handle bags. It's so different. And in fact, I have worn this to my Elmes store. My essay loves it. For a lot of people, this is their favorite bag. They just love the vibe of it and it's so different. So I'm glad that I still have it, but do I still wear it? Yes, definitely, but not like all the time. The next question, Carla Elias, do you prefer the Chanel 19 or the Coco Handle or the Trendy CC? I want one that won't go out of style. I have two classic flaps. I've seen your videos, but I'm still stuck. Honestly speaking, if I could redo it, I would only buy the 19 because it's that great. And I just did, didn't I just do a video on the 19? Uh, if I haven't, because I'm like, my memory is so bad now. Um, maybe it's not that recent, but I'll link to the playlist of all my Chanel 19 videos. I think that this bag is just the most wonderful in terms of a very well-rounded everyday bag for Chanel because let's just face it, there's not one bag that is very everyday if you want to keep it in really good condition. It just isn't going to happen. But to be able to keep it as good condition as possible while still be able to enjoy it often without having to baby it all the time, yes, still careful, all that, da 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 but it's not so intense the 19 is your best bet, especially in the small size. It will sag less, especially if you have an organizer, it will help the structure. If you are careful with all aspects, you're just gentle with your bags, then the 19 is, um, is my choice. If I had to choose between the three and if I had to redo it completely, I would, I would just do 19, but obviously I couldn't just redo it because the 19 came out last but let's say that you do have room for more than just one right because if i had to just do it all over again i would just choose the 19 and forget about these two but you know i always have room for chanel and i don't mind having more bags from chanel just because they're very much my aesthetic some days i just favor this some days i just favor this they're kind of similar but very different for these two bags it comes down to material if you love caviar 
You can only tolerate caviar, go with cocoa handle. If you love a good lambskin, if you're not afraid of lambskin, go for the trendy. They are still very different though. I'm, I'm not saying that that's your only deciding factor, but I do think that if you love your lambskin bags, you're just gonna enjoy this. It's much heavier, but it's hefty. It's all leather, it's inside and out. It's, it has a lot going on. It's really nice. It's very, it has, it has impact. When you wear this bag, it has impact. It also looks like a little briefcase and it goes with a lot of outfits. It's quite versatile. I will say that the Coco handle for me is less versatile. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the shape. It definitely is more feminine and more elegant, but it's not bad. This one is just cooler, more, um, more substantial. This one is, you know, it's still very nice and it's very feminine, very elegant. Um, and it usually comes in caviar, which is usually a good bonus. For most people, they are just more comfortable with caviar material. But if I had to redo it, like I said, I, I would still just do the 19 because the 19 has just been time and time again, every time I run and reach for a Chanel bag and I don't, and I don't wanna be fussy and I just, uh, I just wanna be carefree, but I still wanna wear something nice. I just go with the 19. With this one, I think it's more with my more oversized outfit, so in the winter time. And then with this, because I got it in a very light color, even though my other one is blue, I still favor this one because I love this color. So with this one, I tend to wear it with my very light color outfit, usually in the summer. So it's very sort of occasion and outfit dependent for me. Whereas the 19 is almost any time I feel like wearing it. Next question by Jenny Kim. Do you own pre-owned bags or do you prefer to buy brand new? I want to buy a pre-owned bag, but also don't know if it's better to purchase from the store for future repairs and etc. I do have a preference for retail, um, for, for buying retail because not only do I like the retail experience, that also builds history with your essay um, because whenever there's hard to think, hard to get items, by building that history, it helps you with future purchases. I also like the idea of being the first owner and therefore being the only person that puts in the wear and tear. How I want and how I treat my bags, I'm the only responsible one. That is not to say that pre-owned is bad in any way. I think buying pre-owned has its place, which I have in the past. I have bought pre-owned things that uh, were already discontinued. I have bought pre-owned things just to save on money sometimes. However, as my collection has grown to it is now, and not just about bags, right? There's also accessories, clothes, etc. I am not in a place where I feel like I need to always be seeking or looking for new things. I am quite content with a lot of what I have, which kind of leads me to the next question, actually. Um, so buying pre-owned, I'm not against it. If, if I was really after something, I will look if it comes down to looking at the pre-owned market. But I'm not in the urge to do so. I don't have the need to do so. And you are 100% correct about buying from the retail store because it does, it does help you being the original customer to get future repairs, to get future services whether it's for that item or for another item that you want in the future. That is that is a very big reason for me to also buy retail. Not only do I like the experience more, but I actually also like the aftercare and having an essay that takes care of you is so important, especially when it comes to these hard to find items, very expensive items, because you care about those things. Next question. Hi, Amy. Do you still own the Petit Sac Plat and what do you think of the Speedy 20? So I don't own the Petit Sac Plat anymore. I have since rehomed it. When that bag came out, I had, I had FOMO. <laughs> I kind of succumbed to my FOMO. And at the time, I also had a pretty good excuse. I thought that, ooh, it would make a really good mobile phone bag, which it still is. At the time, I also had another phone bag, which is from Chanel. And after owning all these things, especially looking at my collection now, and I still feel that way, I just, 
I don't want so many things anymore. And I, I know this is not answering your question, but this is why I said that earlier, it will lead me to my next question because this is the thought that I'm having right now. So just to answer you, I don't own the bag anymore, but I still, um, I still really like it for if you have that function in your life, just something very quick to get in and out of and it just only fits your essential. The Speedy 20, I like the size a lot. In fact, I really love the fact that they did the zipper all around. I only wish, the only thing I wish for the Speedy 20 is that they did a vaqueta strap or just a leather strap. I don't, I don't like the logo strap with the web. Um, I just prefer a leather strap that goes with a leather bag. I would prefer if it was more timeless because yes, I might not mind the logo strap now, the web strap, but I know that I would prefer having a leather strap in the long term. That is the only reason why I uh, didn't go for it and I hence went with the Nano Speedy. The Nano Speedy is much smaller, however, it's not perfect either. I feel like... <sighs> If they had just put the Nano Speedy strap on the 20, it would just be perfect, make it all pre patina or not, doesn't matter. Even with the Nano Speedy, it was sort of a bag that I bought out of FOMO in the sense that I knew it was going to be really hard to get and it was indeed very hard to get. But miraculously, it became available after the price increase when it was already like 20% more. So very frustrating and I hate it when they do it. It's really hard to put it in words, but I'm gonna try my best. I feel like I at times feel very content with what I have and at times I feel very anxious that I have too much and then at times I have um, FOMO for not having the next best thing. It's just that roller coaster of feelings and it kind of even changes sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, sometimes monthly, sometimes it doesn't bother me. I'm fully aware that these are just passing feelings that as long as you let enough time pass, whatever feeling you have at that time, it will subside and you can just regain your composure. But if you did act on it, you may or may not regret it. Um, sometimes you're just glad that you at least have it. You'll just think about what to do about it later. Um, I just want to avoid having too many of these reaction to my roller coaster feelings because we also have to remind ourselves that there will always be something new that we like and also that uh, we can own everything and also that I want to be able to recycle and style everything that I own already over and over to not only get cost aware but to just be peaceful at uh, what I have and that is not to say that you know I'm peaceful I'm zen I'll never add anything new no 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 <laughs> it's not about that I'm not gonna be a luxury minimalist but at the same time I want to reduce the occurrence of reacting to whatever I'm feeling. And speaking of feeling overwhelmed, please let me know that I'm not the only one because sometimes I do feel like I have an abundance of things, but yet I feel like I don't have enough to wear. Or I don't know what to wear or to, to bring out that day. It just is not a great feeling either, you know what I mean? So it's a lot of extreme feelings and I'm still trying to balance that out. And I don't really have an answer to this issue. I'm sure a lot of us feel the same way. Stop shopping is not the answer either. I, I don't think, I, I think it boils down to the balance, to balancing, to the balancing act, but to also be able to restrict yourself sometimes to not react. <laughs> Anyway, let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, please do subscribe. I would love to have you back. You can also become a member on my channel where you get more exclusive content. You can also buy me a coffee if you enjoyed this Q&A. Thank you so much. Have a great day and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye!